Nearly everyone on the planet has seen famous photographs of astronauts standing on the moon. But the most prominent aspect of these images is also one of the most important pieces of equipment in spaceflight missions, their spacesuits. This aspect is frequently overshadowed by the weight of the historic achievement. Just as NASA has new spacecraft, new suits will be needed to protect astronauts as they return to the moon and eventually Mars. This is the evolution of spacesuits from Mercury to Artemis. NASA was able to achieve the seemingly unattainable aim of transporting people to the moon with the Apollo project. NASA's subsequent work on spacesuit design has built on this legacy. To defend themselves from the harsh conditions of space, the astronauts depended on sophisticated spacesuits. Astronauts have relied on spacesuits to work in comfort and safety. From the dazzling silver of the Mercury suit to the orange pumpkin suits worn by the shuttle crew, spacesuits have protected explorers whether they were working on the International Space Station or walking on the moon. Since the beginning of space exploration, spacesuit technology has advanced significantly. Although the initial spacesuits were heavy and constrictive, they evolved along with technology. The astronauts of the Mercury program wore the first spacesuits in the 1960s, the Herrera spacesuit, also known as the Escafandra Estratonautica in Spain, is a predecessor of the contemporary spacesuit. Colonel Emilio Herrera, a military engineer from Spain, created this spacesuit for a stratospheric flight in an open basket balloon. The three-layered glass panel, metallic frame, and closed-circuit heating system were all features of the rubberized silk suit. The American Mercury spacesuit was initially designed to be a pilot's suit for the military. The Mercury spacesuits were designed to be used in unpressurized high-altitude flights and are lightweight, extremely mobile, and an excellent starting point for the Mercury space program. The Mercury spacesuit, like the Navy Mark IV, was created as a safety measure in case the ship's cabin rapidly depressurized. The SK-1 spacesuit USSR was the first spacesuit to be fully utilized for its intended usage. A non-detachable visored helmet, a life support system, and an inflatable rubber collar in case of an emergency water landing were all included in this pressurized suit. The suit was created specifically for Yuri Gagarin, the first man to walk in space, although it was also used on succeeding Vostok missions, the Gemini spacesuit United States. The flexibility of the Gemini spacesuit marked a significant improvement over the Mercury version. The Gemini model featured neoprene-coated nylon air bladders and a link neck restrained layer, which allowed for greater mobility when pressured in place of fabric-type joints. With an integrated life support system, the Berkut spacesuit USSR improves on its predecessor, the SK-1. Rather than using an external umbilical line to feed air inside the suit, Oxygen was pumped through an open-cycle environmental control system, which connected oxygen tanks in the outfit's backpack container to the rest of the suit. The Apollo A7L spacesuit United States, unlike Gemini spacesuits, was built for use on the moon. As a result, they had to keep the interior of the suit at bearable temperatures during the scorching lunar day and protection against jagged rocks. At the same time, the suits needed to be flexible so that astronauts could collect rock samples from the moon's surface. The Apollo suits had a protective outer layer, a portable life support bag with a seven-hour air-liquid cooling system, and a helmet that was attached to the suit via an external helmet connection to filter out UV radiation and keep internal temperatures cool. The 1,971-designed Orlin spacesuit Russia is also used for spacewalks and any movement outside of a sealed space capsule. The suit comprises a hard torso and helmet frame, as well as flexible limbs for enhanced mobility. The Orlin spacesuit, unlike its American predecessors, lacks an external hose because of its integrated life support system. EMU Suit United States, the extravehicular mobility unit, is intended for usage outside of the pressurized space shuttle cabin. It has 14 layers of material, each of which serves a particular function, such as cooling, pressurizing, or thermal protection. The EMU, in contrast to all prior spacesuits, is designed for numerous uses rather than being individually fitted to a single astronaut. So-called Spacesuit USSR The Russian so-called spacesuit was first built in 1973 after three astronauts suffocated on Soyuz. 11 in 1971. That's a great development, right? The evolution of spacesuits from Mercury to Artemis has taken a great deal. The lightweight spacesuit, which is still in use today, 
is internally pressurized and has integrated shoes. However, the gloves and helmet are removable via a system of tubes and electrical wires. The suit was not made for spacewalks, but rather for use inside the Soyuz rocket during periods of low cabin pressure during the rocket's ascent and descent. It may be worn for up to 30 hours in a pressurized atmosphere and two hours in a vacuum. Launch Entry Suit USA The American Launch Entry Suit is designed for exit and re-entry into Earth's atmosphere, just like its orange so-called space suit counterpart from Russia. To avoid the wearer's blood pooling in their lower body during re-entry, it was built with a pressure-sealed visor, helmet collar, and integrated anti-gravity suit. American ACT-5 Hardshell Spacesuit Acts 5's solid design was made to endure high air pressure while allowing for complete mobility thanks to its rounded joints. The wearer wasn't required to purge nitrogen from their blood before going on a spacewalk, unlike earlier extravehicular mobility devices. Many of the elements of this prototype are still employed in contemporary spacesuit designs even though it has never been used in space. Advanced Crew Escape Suit USA states, the Advanced Crew Escape Suit is designed to safeguard crew members in the event of a rapid cabin depressurization, much like its predecessor. Its design is vastly superior to that of its predecessor, and it features an internal liquid cooling system, full pressurization and air contamination protection for the crew. Even though materials and technologies have advanced since it was initially developed, this suit is still in use today. Fish and Evi A Suit China was reverse engineered from a Russian Orlan suit sold to China in 2004. The design is basically the same as the Russian version, but there are some modifications, such as the wider visor. Additionally, the suit only uses Chinese materials and has Chinese telemetry, systems, and software for digital communications and data management. Final Frontier Design for a Spacesuit USA the Final Frontier Design 4 is still undergoing testing. This spacesuit is a lightweight spacesuit designed for commercial use. The suit's goal is to be highly accessible, affordable, and to give the wearer more movement than earlier suits, while yet shielding them from the pressures of space. The Z1EVA Spacesuit USA Prototype Spacesuit was built in 2014 but has never been used in space as of early 2019. The Z1 is comparable to the Russian Orlin in design, with a semi-rigid torso and a life support backpack that conceals a hatch inside the suit. The suit's design is intended to maintain steady pressure between the suit and the ship's cabin, hence shortening the pre-breath preparation required by previous suits. These measures kept the wearer from getting decompression sickness. The suit is made of modern materials and has more mobility than the earlier EMU, SpaceX's Dragon Suit. Elon Musk commissioned Jose Fernandez, a costume designer for Hollywood, to create a spacesuit for his company in 2016. For movies like Batman v Superman, Fernandez is more renowned for designing costumes for superheroes. Musk wants the appearance of his suits, capsules, and launch vehicles to be unlike anything else. These look more streamlined than the so-called launch and entry suits that astronauts wear to launch off a spacecraft. For the past nine years, Astronauts have been traveling to the ISS in the Soyuz capsule. These suits don't operate on their own, but they do give astronauts an extra layer of protection during the riskiest parts of missions, such as when they fly through the Earth's atmosphere. In the event that the capsule's primary life support systems fail, the suits depend on the communication and life support systems of the spacecraft to maintain life support. Click on the subscribe button if you are finding this video interesting. Spacesuits are now built to be more comfortable and mobile, yet they must still protect the astronaut from the severe environment of space. However, designing effective and comfortable spacesuits is a tough task. It's not just about making a suit that can keep the astronaut alive, it's also about making a suit that the astronaut can wear for long periods of time without getting tired. In addition, spacesuit technology can be employed in the medical field such as in the treatment of paralysis or other medical problems that impair mobility. Spacesuits are required for humanity to explore and exploit the immense expanse of space. They not only safeguard the astronauts, but they also allow us to push the limits of what is possible in space exploration. And as technology advances, we can anticipate even more advanced and capable spacesuits in the future. Traditionally, these suits have been adaptations of pilots' high-altitude suits that carry out a lot of the same purpose. Which of these suits do you want to try on? Want to learn more about the age of space tourism? 
vacationing among the stars. Watch this video popping on the screen right now to learn more.